I've been responsible for moving, I'm just as a guess, but I believe in my lifetime, about 300 million pounds of shrimp. And I've never seen anyone get sick. You know, we uh, we born in this business. Uh, pretty much everyone in the seafood business is born and raised in it. You don't, you don't just decide one day I'm going to be a seafood business guy. So, you know, we got good you know, people in our business, and we know the shrimp, you know, and, and, I, and I'm hoping that'll, that'll keep the public safe, you know. We, uh, we, we testing our shrimp, we checking it. I, I won't put nothing on the market that I won't eat myself. I stayed about two weeks without eating shrimp, and I felt like I was going to die, and I decided I was going to start eating it again because it was so good. But that's one of our major concerns is who's going to be responsible, you know, the uh, I have a feeling this, if I get sued, I'm going to be the one paying the bill. But uh, another concern we got, our, con our commercial sh shrimpers and fishermen are hesitant to fuel up their boats, buy ice and all, and salt, because they believe that open waters will be closed once more. Or they will, have to f or they will find all contaminated seafood, which they know I will not buy, and they're going to have to dispose of it. It is, it is difficult for an out-of-work fisherman to pay for these expenses without the confidence in the government who dictates the opening and closures without, and without the, the confidence in BP's press release which states that virtually all the recoverable all has been recovered. You know, we, if you go out shrimping right now and you want to catch all, I, they could go catch all. But if you want to catch good shrimp, you could catch good shrimp also. So. You know, I told every fisherman, we're going to, you know, when you bring me the product, it's going to be scrutinized 10 times more than it's ever been before. So if you think anything's wrong, don't bring it to me. I will not buy it. I will not take the chance of getting sued or getting someone sick. You know, the last thing I ever want is for somebody to say I, I got him sick or a pregnant woman. Or, you know, I, that would be hard to live with. So we take an extra precautions to make sure that don't happen. And, uh, you know, we're having a difficult, like I said, a difficult time locating insurance companies, you know, who will sell us insurance. And, and that's a, you know, that's a, you know, what I'm scared of is not somebody actually getting sick. I'm scared of someone trying to make money off of this, you know. That, that, that's the scary part, you know. And, and, you know, basically, in summary, we in the seafood industry, we have little, very little trust in the government, you know. Uh, when, I, when I try to sell seafood, I tell them, I say, well, the government said they did thousands of tests and everything's all right. And they say, is that the same government that said only a thousand barrels a day was leaking out the well? And I say, well, it is the same government, but it's a different branch. <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, so that, that, that's some of the problems we have. And, and um, you know, we appreciate with the help with people like you that maybe we'll get down to the bottom of it. But I, I firmly believe that all the seafood I've seen so far is safe. Um, I eat seafood probably six, seven times a week. Um, I've, I haven't had any problems with the seafood. Um, so we, you know, we, we hoping that the government is doing the right job and, and making sure everybody's safe and maybe, um, we could all get through this one day. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Plancher very much. And thank you for being here, uh, today. Um, our next uh, witness is Mr. Uh, A.C. Cooper, Jr. He is, um, a fisherman, uh, from Plaquemine, Parish, uh, and the Vice President of the Louisiana Shrimpers Association. Uh, he is the owner of the commercial shrimp boat, the Lacey K. Um, and we thank you for coming, Mr. Cooper. Whenever you're ready, please begin. Yeah, I'd just like to talk a little bit about the damages done to our community. This oil spill we have all on the bottom of our waterways. Um, we, we have reports of numerous fish kills, we know the all's there. Noah keeps saying that the all's not there. Everybody says it's not there. We know it's there. I worked in one part of this particular bay for two months. And we wear hazmat suits. We wear gloves. We taped up. 
They said all is not there. When they got rid of me, the last day I was working for BP, I found all is on the bottom. I reported to the Coast Guard, reported to BP, brought them out there, showed them it was there. This, this has cracked ca catastrophic effects on our community, our industry, our way of life. We don't let, we don't, do not need, let, need to let this lay because BP is going to step out of here and they're trying to get out of here now. We need to make sure we stay on top of things because if we let them leave now, we're going to be in deep trouble. Everybody says it's over with, they want to paint a picture that, that in a perfect world, it would be. Right now, as you've seen this morning, 90% of the oil is still there, and that's one thing that we are definitely scared of. The places that we do have that's clean, we know it's clean, like Dean was just stating. We worried about when it comes in tomorrow or day after tomorrow that we, we can't fish there anymore. The main thing is that we, we monitor it, monitor the fish areas that are all clean. Let us work in the fish areas that's clean. Where it's not clean, we need to stay away from it. Our fishermen are not going to come in and sell anything that's bad. We want to make sure that we, what we put on the market is, is good. That's one of the main things that we discuss. We have meetings on our own and we do discuss this. Now, we need to make sure that, that BP stays in place for as long as it needs to be. Because we see right now that they are trying to move out and they are trying to go. We don't, we don't need to let them leave now. Finish the job they started. They did it. They need to clean it up. Like Dean said, if we get somebody sick, it's going to come back on us. The, the process of having a doc sign, a uh, waiver saying that um, we caught them in open, open, open areas in the marsh. They're making us sign waivers that we caught them in open marsh. Now, who are we going to make and hold responsible for that? Is BP going to step up and be responsible for what, what we have to do? I signed it for Dean. He signed it for the processors. Who signs for us? So we're going to wind up with the burden of having to hit the blunt of this. We can't even make any money. It opened on uh, May 16th, I mean, eight, August 16th, the season. I went out. Normally I catch a couple thousand pounds to 10,000 pounds. I caught 500 pounds of shrimp at $1.25. Them same shrimp last season was around two two twenty five. dollars They done went down $1. Now, if I can't get the price for my shrimp and I can't catch them, how am I going to survive? I've been doing this for 35 years. My father's 74 years old. He still does it. My sons do it. Hopefully their sons will do it. Hopefully, I don't see any future in it. With the prices and everything that's going on now, we may not have a future. Who's gonna be liable for that? BP needs to step up and make sure they pay us for what's, what they've done. Keep this industry going. Our docks can't afford to keep going. What happens if they go out? One link is broken this chain and we lose our industry. This is something we've been doing all our lives. Who do we go to then? I just wanna make sure uh, they understand that we are not happy with what's going on right now. They say it all is gone. It's not gone. It's on the bottom. We can take you and show you. I brought the Coast Guard. I brought BP and showed them. You stir the bottom up and it all comes up. So whoever says they're gone, as you heard today, they said 75% was gone before, 95, 90% 90, 90 still there. And it is going to come into our shores eventually, somewhere. If not in Louisiana, somewhere else. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. And uh, just so you know, the reason that we're having this hearing is that BP knows that we're not going away. Okay? We're, we're going to stay on them until they do the job. We know that BP did not stand for be prepared. Uh, right from the very first day when they said there was 1,000 barrels per day, uh, all the way until today, they never had a plan put in place to deal with something like this. Uh, and uh, we just can't allow them to believe that the coast is clear, that uh, they can retreat uh, without having to pay for everything that and, and they me, are responsible. Let me say one more thing. Um, in the areas, you heard him talking earlier about five-mile bumpers. I, well, I found all out the season was open in that area this last, the 16th. It was open where I found all that. And then they're talking about... Um, uh, 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 give uh, a, a trade-off, trade-off for the dispersions. And the only trade-off that we feel they gave off to is our, our industry. Because when you sink it like that, we can't see it coming in. Our, our shrimp fishing, all the all-bottom feeders, that's where it went, to the bottom. 
So we're deeply concerned with us what's out there coming in on our bottoms. Okay. Thank you.